All right, guys, welcome back to the Punching In Podcast. I'm Richie. I'm here with Dan. Just got back from Vegas watching UFC 276. <laughs> Snorefest, I thought. Um, I wouldn't say it's a Snorefest. The last, the, the final fight was not entertaining. And the co main event, even though that's, you know, one of the main reasons I wanted to go because Max and Volk are just so good, um, just wasn't competitive. It wasn't that it was yeah. a bad fight, it was just that Volkanovsky was so much better. You know, Max came to fight. You can't say Max Holloway didn't come to fight. Max Holloway always comes to fight. Volkanovski just fucking outclassed him. Max looked off for whatever reason, whether he looked a little slow, couldn't get the timing, um, or Volk was just light years ahead of him all of a sudden. It just uh, The fight didn't live up to the billing, that the expectations, and then, of course, the main mm -hmm. event with Izzy, um, aside from his entrance coming in. The entrance was epic. Um it just didn't do do much for anybody. Well, in the think. in the previous ten rounds that Max and Volkanovski had, I don't remember there being an, a non competitive round. Right. <clears throat> and then in this fight, I don't remember there being a competitive round. Yeah. And I think I said to you in the middle of the first round, Max looked slow. You did. And <clears throat> I don't know what it was. It just man, Volkanovski gets better every fight. Yeah, he's uh, that guy is a stud. Yeah, there's some some guys you watch Dan and, and they seem to grow on you. Robert Whitaker was that way for me for a while. Like. Is this guy the, the real deal or what? And, you know, the more I watched him, the more I, I, I saw how good he was. And the same thing with Volkanovski. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about I mean, him. They go and they face off, and you see the size difference. And you're thinking, okay, well, you know, that type of size difference, this guy needs to get inside. This guy needs to wrestle him. This guy needs to do this. And this guy can do whatever the fuck he wants. <laughs> he's yeah. outside. He's quick. He's, I he's just, dude, he stayed in the pocket. His, his counter shots <clears throat> were great. His... Just his offense was just on point. He was landing every every punch he threw. He landed. He was not there when Max threw back, and maybe it was just Max lost a step. I don't know. Um, or or Vulcan. Max hasn't him. lost a step. You watch Max's last few fights yeah. against Jair, against Cater. It's just dominating great yeah. guys. He hasn't lost a step. Volkanovski's just he's gaining steps. Yeah, I mean, well, you said Max looks slow, so um, I think it was in comparison to Volkanovski. Yeah, could, could be, could be, um, but 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 hell of a. A fight by Volkanovski. I mean, just every time out, just proven he's at the top of the food chain. And um, whether he makes the move to lightweight and goes there or stays and, and takes on a guy like Josh Emmett, who's got big power and can wrestle, should be uh, should be an interesting matchup either way. I mean, who doesn't want to see Josh Emmett fight anybody? Yeah. He uh, never has boring fights. Right. <clears throat> be, be very interesting to see that fight. Um, yeah, the Izzy fight with Kananir. Kananir just looked... looked uh, Happy to be there? I don't know. You know, sometimes guys take that step up and they're, uh, I don't want to say a deer in the headlights, but they're just not used to everything that comes with it. And you're on the big stage now and you're not used to it. All the media and everything that goes into it. And even the entrance of Izzy is just was epic. And, you know, you, you get inside and you're not throwing punches. I mean, the only way for you to take Izzy out is to, is to, not, is to you know, Take him out. I mean, that's what you do, Kennedy, right? So I, I don't know how you take out Izzy unless you wrestle fuck him. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, hey, we'll see what happens with Pereira because that guy's obviously got some smoke in his hands, which he's shown to Izzy before. He showed yep. it again on Strickland. That's going to be a fun fight. The funny thing about Pereira is he might actually beat Izzy, who's a top five pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world, a dominant champion right now. He might beat him and not be able to beat any wrestler in the division. Right. I mean, I haven't seen the guy wrestle. His first fight in the UFC, he fought a guy who was not a highly touted fighter or wrestler, and the guy took him down pretty quick. That's the only time I've seen anybody shoot for a takedown on him. Right. Um, so we'll see what happens, but everybody wants to see that fight. That's going to be a highly promoted, promoted <clears throat> fight. It's going to be a fun fight to watch. Um, I just don't know how Pereira's wrestling and, and grappling is, and if you don't use that against Izzy, Maybe outside of Pereira, who can get away without using it. Um, I don't see how you beat Izzy. Yeah, I'm with you on that. And I thought the the best <clears> chance for somebody to, up to take Izzy out would be Whitaker, and obviously he wasn't able to. So twice. Um, I, I don't I don't know anybody else now. I mean, Strickland, if he, he kind of dr dr dropped the ball there a little bit by not wrestling Pereira and just going to his strength. I mean, Strickland's a really good grappler, and he's a, he's a a good wrestler, and I would think he was good enough, but he, I mean, he just, for whatever reason, said, hey, I'm going to stand with this world-class striker in <clears throat> Pereira. Um, and, and it's weird, Dan, because it looked like he actually saw the hook coming, and he kind of dipped back on it, 
and faded, but uh, not enough. And when he got, guy's got quickly, fast, that yeah. guy's long. I mean, how far back can you dip to get out of that? Can you see how long those guys' yeah. arms are? <clears throat> I mean, Pereira's got a hell of a left hook. Um, he knocked out Izzy with it in their kickboxing fight, and it's the same left hook that that dropped Strickland and, and put him on Queer Street. So, uh, you know, I guess that's the fight they're going to make, put, probably push for next, I would assume. If you look up and down that division at middleweight, there really are no stud wrestlers. Yeah. And if you're not a stud wrestler, maybe outside of Pereira, I don't see how you're going to be there. Brunson's easy. actually probably the best wrestler there. He's probably the best stylistic matchup yes. for Izzy, but he's not getting a title shot anytime soon coming off of that fight with Conanier where he got knocked dead. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Izzy gets by this guy. He might have a, a long road ahead of, of, of winning fights because I'm not sure I see anybody on that list that matches up well with him. The, the only thing I see on that future is if Usman fights Leon Edwards, beats Leon and says, hey, I am unbeatable in this welterweight, pretty much cleaned it out. Let's me and Izzy do a super fight. I could see that happening. and be a fun fight to watch. It, it'll be interesting because Usman can bring the wrestling chops to to that um, to that weight class and and be two, pretty dominant at what he does. Two dominant champions. Stylistically, it would be a Usman's fun fight. Usman's never to watch. lost in the UFC. Izzy's never lost at 185 in the UFC. That's a marketable fight. Yeah, I would and think I typically so. don't like guys moving up and champ champs champs fighting each other. I, I don't like it because I think it ties Kills up divisions. Division, right. Um, but that'd be an interesting fight. Yeah. It's kind of funny because Volkanovski, I think that's the first thing he said. I'll be busy in both 45 and 55. <laughs> I think I believe him, too. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> he just seems like a buzzsaw. He uh, he definitely picked it up. And he doesn't take damage. No, he didn't, right? So uh, how do you fight Max Holloway and not take damage? Crazy. Crazy. Impressive. Who else do we have on that card besides that? Um, oh, obviously, wow. you know, Strickland before the Strickland fight. It was Barbarino and... Um, Lawler. Yep, and Robbie Lawler, but <clears throat> man, Barbarino does what he does. Doesn't throw really hard, but just in your face, a, a high pressure. Robbie actually looked good for the first round, and then just seemed like he kind of faded out. And I think you pointed out to me as soon as he looked at the clock, um, halfway through that second round. Yeah, I mean, yeah. For, hey, for a forty-year-old guy, yeah. Robbie Robbie fought really well. I thought it's the best he's looked in several fights. Agreed. Um, you know, we picked Barbarino to win that fight, and when we were at the sports book, kind of loaded up on it just because. He's durable as fuck. Yeah. You know, and, and you think, you know, Lawler's strength is the power in his hands. And Robbie landed flush quite a few times. Sure. And I think that fight would have been over with just about anybody in that division. Barbarino is far more durable and tough, in my opinion, than he is skilled. He's just so tough. Yep. <clears throat> He's in your face. I thought he would wear him down, and he did. And that guy... Man, I mean, those those short elbows inside were impressive by Barbarino. Like, just... You know, he was throwing, really good. Yeah, he was throwing combinations, and then he and you know, I think what hurt Robbie was, you know, he rolls with punches very good, but he moves his feet, and then come that second round when he slowed down, it's because his feet stopped moving, and he was just trying to roll punches, but he wasn't really moving out of the way at that point, point. and that's when Barbarino was starting to land, landing the the short elbows. Robbie dropped some bombs at certain points during it, but phased Barbarino, but not by much, and just kept dropping him until Robbie was pretty much done so it was a good ref stoppage there oh yeah great stoppage um, but i mean 40 years old a lot of wars yeah it's a young man's sport 100 percent agreed with you but yeah betting wise it was it was a big one for us because you know it was a pick em fight you know the odds were close and you know the fact is if you can't if, if you can't take barbarino out and you're gonna fade how do you win the fight right you know unless you knock him out and that guy's I'm not sure that guy's ever been knocked out. I, I don't know, but um, if he has, I don't remember it. So it, it was great, not only betting on that fight, but taking the prop bet to win by TK or KO. I think it was plus five hundred or four fifty or something like I'm that. Not, was it that high? I forgot what it was. I don't remember if it was that high, Dan. I think I think it might have been less than that. But um, it was great because I bet Barbarino will win. I bet I took the the prop bet on that as well, and that helped me on a bunch of my other bets. So. Um, Hopefully you listened to the show last week and made a little bit of money on that. Dropping down to the Pedro Munoz, Sean O'Malley. First, I want to just say, anybody out there questioning Pedro Munoz's heart, his toughness, or balls, or look for a way out, uh, you're smoking crack. Pedro's probably one of the toughest guys in the sport. Comes to fight every time. Total alpha male kind of guy. Um, and if you've never been scratched in the cornea, you have no idea 
how painful that is. I've had that a, a few times and had to go to the hospital once on one of those. But, I mean, you can just get a, a, a little scratch and your eyes just continually watering and it's tough to open up, but you can kind of fight through that a little bit. You get a really good scratch on there. Man, your eyes shut and, and, and you're not doing anything. So that's my I've only had it happen that. once and it was a good one and it was literally impossible yeah. to open my eye. <laughs> impossible to open it. And as far as Pedro goes, I think he's the toughest guy to ever walk into our gym. Who's yeah. tougher than Pedro Munoz that's been here? Yeah, he's he's in the top five for sure. There's some tough guys walking through here and are here oh, right now. A lot now. of tough. I mean, everybody's tough in yeah. the gym, but there's got to be somebody at the top. Yeah. That's, that's my answer. Yeah. So <clears throat> anybody questioning that's ridiculous. Um, I, I thought O'Malley was kind of a dickhead the way he handled it. Um, he's over as hell. Dan, the, the, the one – 100% agree with you. He's over as hell. He got the big pop when he walked out. But what's funny is – when he says Pedro's looking for a way out, first off, Pedro suffered no damage, and Pedro was and won the first round. He won the first round on two of the three judges' scorecards. I thought he won the first round. I thought he threw. I thought he. I, I haven't seen punch stats on it. I thought he doubled him up in that first round. Punch stats, leg kicks. He was he landing. was attacking the leg well. It wasn't a great first round. It wasn't an overly exciting first round, which is somewhat surprising going to that fight. But that's you know, sometimes guys are feeling themselves out, yep. and there's, you know, O'Malley's a little bit of a sniper from the outside, yep. so you have to try to get your your space and your angles um, and your distance. Um, but for him to say, I was piecing him up, I never got hit. I mean, and he looked you, for a way out. 100%. He lost the first round. There was no damage in the second round. Look for a way out on what? Dan, he said 100% he looked for a way and out. This is a guy yeah. standing toe to toe with the Cody Garbrandts and the Jose Aldos right in the pocket, <laughs> just throwing bombs, Dude, if you want to shot. Yeah, if you're looking for a way out. Night, bonuses, fights of the night. Yeah, I just, mean, this is just, just the wrong guy to say that. I thought it was, a, I thought it was an asinine response. That he had to it. Um, but, I mean, he's a young kid. Yeah. It is what it is. Um, that, yeah, that definitely is what it is. I don't know if they'll run that back, but um, I, I, I don't know what they'll do I don't know that. if they will or not, because it wasn't a great right. it wasn't it wasn't exciting a great fight up to leading point. up to it. Um, speaking of not young kids, Jim Miller and Donald Cerrone Oof. on that show. It's another one that we identified, and we jumped on Jim Miller on that, on some parlays, which, which, which helped the night. Yeah, I mean, they're two of the winningest fighters in the history of the sport. The difference is Jim Miller is still performing, maybe not at his peak level when he was younger, but he's not that far off of it. Whereas yeah. Donald Cerrone, I mean, Cowboy's Cowboy. He's a legend. He's a first ballot Hall of Famer, but he's a shell of the former Cowboy Cerrone. Just is. Look yeah. at his fights. I think he lost you know? five in a row. Is that, is I don't that know accurate? how many it is, but he's, he's lost a lot of fights in a row. And, and, and Jim Miller is still beating people. Fairly regularly. He's still a dangerous guy. So I thought that was a maybe it's seven in a row. Really good matchup for, for Jim Miller, and I think he was gonna win that fight just about every time. Yeah, that was another great pick just to jump on the Jim Miller train there. Yeah, we loaded up on him. You know where he's from, right? Oh, God. The great state of Jersey. Ugh. God's country. God's hey, the country. fight above Jim Miller. Um this Jalen Turner kid, very explosive. Uh Brad Riddell is actually a good good striker, good kickboxer. And Jalen Turner just blew him up, man, and then and then finished with the guillotine. So yeah, uh, Riddell's just, one of those guys that's uber tough and skilled. Yep. And whereas he may not be a top five talent in the UFC, which who is only five people are. Right. Um, he's <laughs> well, one of the, well said, Dan. He's one of those guys though that you look at him and say, well, he's never going to get blown out. He's going to be in every fight. Right. He might not beat the top five guys there, but nobody's going to smoke this guy and make him look like he doesn't belong in the cage with him. That's the type of guy that is. And he got smoked and didn't look like he belonged in there. Yeah. I mean, that was a hell of a performance. Yeah, Jalen Turner. Turner's got uh, got a little something about him. Um, definitely an explosive striker, and it was nice to see a submission out of him. And his fight before that, he looked good against uh, Malarkey. Who's fighting Michael Johnson coming this weekend. Correct. And he uh, he knocked him out. <clears throat> so uh, I want to see him on his back. I, I, and again, I haven't watched a ton, and there's so many fights, and it's hard to follow all these guys. I did remember his last fight. I don't think I've seen him. I don't remember f the Frivola fight where he lost. I don't remember it. Um, it's probably when he. Just I mean, he's got plenty of fights. It's just it's yeah. just so hard to keep up with everybody <clears throat> these days. But scary dude on the outside. I don't I don't think I'd want to be standing in front of that guy. And obviously, I don't want him grabbing a hold of my neck either. Yeah, it, that was a pretty nasty guillotine he threw on there so we'll see if he keeps improving it's just somebody to keep an eye on yep. going, going forward um other than that you know the card was what it was yeah i thought just, there were some good fights it was just a little it didn't end on a on a high note which is kind of like what you remember on on, on big shows 
Uh, the Man, you know, when you go to Vegas or or some of these big events, you're going there for the main card. So as exciting as the prelims are, you know, when you're at home watching it and all that, it's you know could be a good card. But really, you know, you're spending your money, you're going out there, you're doing the hotel and you're gambling. You just man, you're there for the main event, man. You're pumped for these, you know, Volkanovskis and the Izzy's and these big names. When you go there and it's and it's a letdown, it's like oh man, you walk away from this event like ugh. I mean, the average fan, yeah, that's 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 true. If you're somewhat of a hardcore and knowledgeable in the sport, which I would have hoped you would have been by now, <laughs> you know, twenty five years in. I would think you'd be able to see through the huff and puff and smoke of just the main event and be able to enjoy a card. Well, I was really looking forward to the Volkanovski fight with Max, and I was hoping it would be round 11 starting off. So <sighs> It's just – it's it's hard to say that was a bad fight when one guy was just so fucking good. I guess because I was rooting for Max. And I How do you not root for Max? And I, mean, I wanted to see him, you know, take the belt. So maybe that's maybe that's where it comes from. But oh well, live and learn. Um, hey, so speaking of, speaking of those guys, you know, I wanted to go over a, a pound for pound list with you on just UFC f- related fighters, not, not any other organizations. And I'm not sure any other organizations guys would, would break our top five, but if we're going from the top, top, top five pound for pound or top five in their division, top, top five pound for pound, okay. uh, rankings. And again, I don't think anybody we will go over it first and then we'll see what's out there. But um, just from the top down, I think we can both agree. Volkanovski, I think I would put number one. I sent a text to somebody high up in the UFC halfway through that fight and said, if this guy's not your number one pound-for-pound pound fighter in the world, I think you need to reevaluate your list. Yeah. Is, that guy is fucking good. It, yeah, I agree. And there, and, and it's no uh, no disrespect to Usman, who I have at number two. I think it's just more <clears throat> of where Volk is right now in his career and 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 what he's done. I mean, Usman doesn't really lose rounds, much fights, he much doesn't. less fights. So, and he's done nothing but win, dominate. win, win, and dominate guys. Um, but Volkanovski has just so many tools and he does so many damage with those tools. I mean, his ground and pound. And, and, with Ortega? And, and with Ortega. And it's not just, not everybody's good at ground and pound, you know, and you think like, oh, this guy's a good striker. He's got heavy hands right. standing. Well, he'll, he'll have good ground and pound. It doesn't always work like that. It's MMA math. Not only did that guy's ground and pound look devastating, he did it on top of Brian Ortega, who outside of Charles Oliveira is probably the most dangerous guy in the history of MMA on his back. So when you're doing that against a guy at that level and and then you're, you're striking against a Max Holloway who's got that size and the height and the reach on you, but you're still able to get inside and do all the damage. You saw what he did to the zombie, all striking, you know, even though he probably could have taken him down at will right. and gotten safe and, and played it safe. He is, I mean, he's, if Brian Ortega couldn't finish him in those two tight ass chokes he Oof. had on him in his last fight, the guy may be unsubmissible, if that's even a word. Um, gas tank, cardio for days. Yeah. Fight IQ, um, just He's the total package. I so. think I think he's number one yeah. with a bullet, and and I think Usman, at any other time in history, may have been number one with a bullet. But I don't think he's as good as Volkanovski is. Yeah. I don't think anybody is. Right. So we both have agree on Usman at two. Yep. Um, Got to put Izzy at three. I think you know he's just had a tremendous run. He's pretty dominant. Nobody's been able to take him out of his game. Um, it, it's funny if there were if this were a period in history of the UFC where you had some high level wrestlers at middleweight, he might not even be. An after he might be an afterthought for that list, right? Because I don't think that's a strength in his game. You know, I remember seeing Kevin Gastelum take him down in that amazing fight they had um, back for the title. Um, obviously, Jan Blahovitz was able to take him down, which is a bigger, stronger, heavier dude. So it's not really fair. Although Blahovitz is not a great wrestler, right? Um, so I think if you had a few wrestlers in that division, he might not be as dominant as he is. May not even be champion. It is what it is. That's the way the division is stacked up right now. I got him number three on my list. Yeah. It's funny because when you say wrestlers, I think of Yoel Romero. Um, and that but, fight was just such a, such a boring fight that was terrible. But you can't, you can't look at Yoel Romero of old, of the right. past, and say, Izzy fought a great wrestler. Yoel tried one takedown, I yeah. think, in that entire fight. It was like in the fourth round. Um, Yoel doesn't wrestle anymore. I think it's probably just a, fa- a factor of him being really old right now, and it tires you out to wrestle, yep. and his body's beat up. So, you know, he faced a formerly amazing wrestler, maybe one of the greatest wrestlers in the history of wrestling, 
in Yoel, but Yoel didn't wrestle him in yeah. that fight. Neither one of them really neither, did neither anything. Neither guy did anything in that fight. Neither one did really much of anything. And, and, if, and it looked even worse coming off probably one of the best fights of the year with Joanna and Wei Li just prior to that, which was just a war. Um, yes. So that made that main event look that much worse. Yeah, so. I remember talking to somebody after that show and said that, said I didn't think neither Yo Joanna nor Wei Li deserved to lose their fight. And neither yeah. Yoel nor Izzy deserve to win their fight. Agreed. You know, it's just, that was just a bad fight. Yeah, agreed. So Volk at one, Usman two. We've got Izzy at three. Four, got to go with Charles Oliveira, the submission machine, De Bronx. Probably my favorite fighter of all time to watch. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying he's the greatest fighter of all time, um, but he's the most fun guy out there to watch. He can finish you anywhere you are in, in the cage at any period of time, striking, grappling, obviously. On the way down to the ground, he can jump on something. That guy is really dangerous. <clears throat> um, I think he's probably going to be a pretty good underdog against Islam, and I think he's probably going to lose that fight just because the guy on top typically wins fights. Yep. But if anybody can can beat an Islam um, playing that game, you know it's going to be Charles. I don't think anybody expects Charles to stuff his takedowns, but Charles is still dangerous <laughs> on the bottom. But He's, uh, he's number four on the list for, for me as well. Yeah, and that's going to be an interesting stylistic matchup. I guess we'll talk about that when the, when the time is right. But uh, Charles' striking got, is much improved. He's got some power all of a sudden. So it'll be interesting to see if Islam goes for takedowns right away or says, hey, I'll he take He gets hurt, but he's durable, Yep, which is kind of an oxymoron. Yep. But he does. I mean, you, he got dropped twice against Poirier in that first round. You know, he got dropped by Chandler. Uh, did Gaethje drop him? I think he did. Um, I don't remember. He gets, hurt, he gets hurt in his fights, but he... Doesn't die. Yeah. And as long as he's alive and breathing, he's as dangerous as it comes. So, Agreed. yeah, I agree with him at four. And it's funny because, you know, when number five, and we didn't even talk about Nganyu yet or anybody like that, but people forget about Peter Jan, Pietra Jan. And, and that's a guy that we rave about all the time. And was he? He had, he had the loss, and, and, and now he gets, like, dropped out of the rankings, I think. But for me, he's one of those top five guys. I mean, if you, if you look at what a pound-for-pound -pound ranking really is – it's not, you know, who's got the best record of late. You know, it's not who's the most dominant in their division, who has the most favorable matchups at their particular division right. at that particular time. It's who's the best fighter at their, at, at regardless of weight all around. And I've got Jan on my top five list too. And yeah. that's right where he, that's right where he fits in at five. I think he's the best 135er in the world. You know, whether you agreed with the decision against Aljamain or not, it was Aljamain made it his fight, fought smart, was able to get the win on, Two cards or three cards, I don't remember how it came out exactly. I thought Jan won that fight. Um, so did I. Jan was dominating him in the first fight. Um, you know, whether he had a better strategy or a better training camp or whatnot for the first fight, I think uh, I think Jan's a really, really, really dangerous guy and a good guy. And the only way anybody's going to beat him is by taking him down and try to stall it out like, like Aljo did in that yeah. fight. And he fought a smart fight, and he's the champion because of it. But, yeah, I've got Peter Jan at number five on my list, too. So yeah, so our, looks like we agree. Yeah, so our top five is Volkanovski, Usman, Izzy, Charles, and, and Peter Jan for our top five. And I was just looking at Bellator or even PFL or some of the other – or one. I don't think there's anybody there that could pierce this top five. Do you? There's certainly guys in those other organizations that are top five at their weight, in my opinion, or the yep. Adriana Marais of the world at 125. <clears throat> you know, Patricky. Whichever pit bull it is, yeah. the, 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 the smaller one. The 45 or yes. the one that came back and beat uh, Antonio, uh, AJ McKee. Yes. Antonio McKee. You know, he's certainly a top five guy in his weight class, in my opinion. Um, but no, I don't, I don't have any. Yaroslav, anybody. another under, was 26 and 0. Ne Nemkov looks really good at Yeah, Nemkov 15 at, and 2 at, at or 205. Yep. Another I mean, beast. I mean, hell, hell, if you look at Bellator's 135 pound division, they, they're stacked. Yeah, with Stotts. Ma Magomedov, that yep. guy looked amazing. Agreed. In, 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 his, in his fight. So they're all, there's a lot of guys that have arguments to be in top five in the world at their weight, but I don't see anybody in those other organizations that are top five pound for pound right now. Yeah. And, and it's weird, Dan, if, if AJ McKee would have beaten Pitbull again, you know, would he have been in our top five? I don't know. That Not been, yet. That would have been a discussion to have. But I think he'd be knocking on the door in the coming. Year or two, right? But uh, you know, he didn't have his A game on that night. I still thought he won that fight. Watching it, you thought um, he won that fight? I thought he won that okay. fight. Yeah, but but uh, didn't get the decision. Didn't do enough, obviously. So right, you know, I I I think he will eventually get to that list, though. I think he's that talented. 
Um, I agree with you on that. I guess depending on what weight class, if he goes to 55. We'll yeah, see. you have to yeah. see. I mean, who knows how Volkanovski does at 55? It's a whole different weight class, whole different world. You True. know, size matters. 100%. We're not just talking about... Uh, Kayla Harrison? Right. Good segue. So PFL just happened uh, also the, the, the night before. Kayla looked dominant. You know, her ground and pound was good. She was on her A game. She had that big... Big takedown slam. I mean, she was on. She was on her. Yeah, she game. was really disappointed not to be able to fight Julia Budd, who's a former Bellator champ. It was a name. Um, it, it was. It, it was a little bit of a cachet name for her, and I know she gets um, shit on, for lack of a better word. Of hey, you're fighting tomato cans, and if you wanted better competition, you would have did this, this, and this, and gone to the UFC, or you would have you would have gone to Bellator. I mean, it wasn't her choice. She wanted to, you know, test herself and and, and go to the. You know some of these uh, other divisions, but uh, at the end of the day, PFL had the the rights to her, and they matched the contract, and she is where she she is. And PFL's doing a, the best they can to bring in women. But when you look at the landscape, Dan, how many 155 pound women or 145 pound women, great women, are there in the world to go around to fight? You know, Kayla Harrison. Um, understood. Um, I think she's fought a top level fighter twice already, and Larissa Pacheco. Pacheco agreed. That, let me tell you something that. She is a lot better than a lot of people think. Agreed. She's really tough, and I think she would surprise a lot of people fighting people at 145. Um, assuming, Dude, you, she, assuming she can make 145. You, we you know think, Kayla. You think she'd beat Chris uh, Cyborg, don't you, Pacheco? I would bet on Pacheco against Cyborg yeah. right now if they fought. 100% I would. <clears throat> yeah, She is tough. She is dangerous. She's got – she hits hard. Um, <clears throat> she's a really good fighter. Yeah, she's game. I just think she's doesn't match up really well with Kayla, I, which – not a lot of people do. I was going to say that's that's a tough matchup for a lot of people, and I don't care who it is, whether it's Cyborg, whether it's Amanda, whoever it may be. Um, I don't care who it is. Kayla's going to be a tough opponent. I, I just saw an article where Pacheco was shitting on Kayla, saying she's just really good at one thing, and this is MMA, and MMA is a lot of things. <laughs> you had a great comeback on that. <clears throat> how many how many good things was how many things was Khabib dominant at? Yeah. I mean, if if if, the, if if you couldn't find a 155er, which is historically the best or one of the best divisions in men's mixed martial arts, if you couldn't find somebody well-rounded enough at 155 for the entire time Khabib was in the UFC to to beat him at what he was dominant at and stop that, you think there's a lot of women out there at yeah. 145, 155, even 135, which I think Kayla could make, that's going to stop her at what she's dominant at? Yeah. You know? Good luck. I mean, that's why Ronda was so dominant because she was dominant in that one skill set. Nobody could catch up to that skill set, um, right? And the, and 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 the women's division, which we've said a bunch of times, is still it's playing catch up to the men. I mean, right. women's MMA was 15 years behind the curve, and, and you see it getting better and better. Um, but it's when when you see some women getting ahead of the curve, they're dominant. Whereas a couple guys out there, you're not really ahead of the curve. They're just they're a little bit better than other people, but right. you don't see the dominant champions in men's mixed martial arts like you have in in women, just because they're as a sport, women's MMA is still catching up. And I think five, six years from now, they're all gonna be good and you're not gonna have dominant champions because it's so hard to dominate in, in, in this sport. But if people aren't winning fights from the bottom in the men's division, you think they're gonna win it from the bottom in the in women's MMA yeah, right, right now? I mean Nobody's going to beat Kayla Harrison when she's on top of them. It's just not going to happen. Agreed. You know, the only question is, can someone stop her from getting there? Just like, could someone stop Khabib from getting there? The answer was no. 29 fights right. with Khabib. It's no on however many fights Kayla's had so far. Um, 14 or so. Um, yep. I think the answer is still going to be no if Kayla fights Larissa again. I think she's a bad, a little bit of a nightmare matchup for her. Um, but we'll see, we'll see what happens. But, it, you know, Kayla, it's not that Kayla doesn't want to fight the best in the world. That's why she signed with Bellator, you know, signed an offer sheet to Bellator. She wanted to go there and fight Cyborg. Right. And prove herself. I mean, she would want to fight Cyborg tomorrow if she could. PFL matched. So she's in the PFL. At least they had Julia Budd in there, who was a former Bellator champ. She was excited to get an opportunity to fight her. That that didn't happen. Not going to happen. Um, so we'll... Just wait for the end of this year and then see what happens with Kayla. Assuming she's still got to get through, probably got to get through Larissa again. Right. Who's a dangerous out for anybody. It's um, tough to keep fighting the same person again. Yeah, you, you know, you see their tendencies and what they like to do and what they don't like to do. I'm sure uh, Larissa's going to make some adjustments, but I don't think it's going to be enough to overtake Kayla. I don't think pe people realize not only that Kayla's skill set of takedowns is so good, but her submissions, the arm bars are really good. But she's a gym rat and she's always improving. I mean, she's a, a pretty mentally tough chick. 
and she's in the gym grinding all the time. Here's somebody who just loves to be in the gym, loves the competition, trains with the guys here. And and um, if by grinding you mean grinding on my nerves, I agree with you 100%. Like nails on a chocolate. <sighs> <clears throat> um, we had two other studs in this uh, – in this sh- on the show was uh, Magomed Magomed Karamov, who I'm a big fan of, and he took out Delano Taylor with some just sharp shooting strikes. In that was it the second round? Was it a finish? No, it was first round. Oh, first round finish, right? Um, looked really good, Magomed, and he needed that first round finish to get points because he had a visa issue and didn't fight on the first fight. And then also Magomed Umlatov won by knockout um, and looked really good. Look, started off a little slow. Both guys, and One, then he won by second round knockout. Yeah, that's what it was. And think. again, they both fought really tough guys. Uh, you know, yeah. Delano was like nine and one or nine and two. Right. Um, the uh, Al Salawi, who who fought Umlatov, was like eighteen and was three. he from Brave? I think was he over in Brave? I, I think, think he was tough guy. <laughs> yep. Um, they just man, a couple of good guys. Really good guys. Really good guys. Yes. Good guys in the gym. Train hard. Solid, you know, solid, both solid dudes. people. Umlatov now gets into the tournament, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, Dan, and, and Karamov, even though he got six points in a first-round finish, didn't have any points before. I think he tied, I forgot who it was. Unfortunately, and, the, the, the And tie, he's out of it. I yeah, mean, the tiebreaker tie in PFL, and I know you have to have some type of tiebreakers because you're going to have people with a similar amount of points. The tiebreaker, the first tiebreaker, if people have the same amount of points, is number of fights. Which is strange. So if you if you get a finish in your in one fight, you had a visa issue for your your other fights. You only fought once. You got six points because you knocked the guy out in the first round. The other guy won two decisions. He has six points. You have six points. He gets the tiebreaker. Yeah. Um, Even if you lost is, to a guy head to head, which had which happened. is interesting because we had it in the heavyweight division <sighs> with Klitson, yeah. who ended up with six points and lost the tiebreaker to Ferreira. They both had the same number of fights, so the next tiebreaker was if any of them had a finish. So Ferreira was one and one with a finish, six points. Klitson Abreu was two and zero oh with two decision wins and six points. One of those decisions was against Ferreira, Ferreira that he dominated, but Ferreira got the tiebreaker. That's crazy I'm, to me. It That's is a little crazy, but you I know think they I, need to sharpen that rule up. On yeah, a I think they head. should too. You know, I, if you fought head to head and you beat the guy, and you beat the guy, and you have the same number of points, you should get in. Of course, period. It's end of story. No in my opinion, but yeah, is what it is on that. Yeah. So uh, other other than that, that was a, a decent card. The PFL it was a you know decent weekend of fights. Um, Vegas is always a fun time. Um, hey, I forgot to mention on our pound for pound ranking, I had two guys just kind of nipping at the heels there, uh, Islam and uh, I think Leon Edwards deserves a little credit. I mean. Edwards hasn't lost since 2015. It was like nine wins in a row, I think. His and his loss was to Usman, who he's going to rematch coming up. I think Leon deserves to be in there, and I think Islam obviously hasn't lost since 2015 either. I think both of those guys are on crazy streaks in in really talented divisions. Right. I think what stops either of those guys from being on the list, not that they don't deserve to be on it or in in, in talks for it, is I don't think either one of them has like that signature win. You know, right. who, who's the signature win? I mean, you look at Izzy, who's above those guys on our list. He's got a win over Yoel. He's got two wins over Robert Whitaker. You know, well, he's his, got his Izzy signature wins are Whitaker, not uh, Yoel. But but he's got but he's got those wins right. against some some Wh- some big names Whitaker, that, are, that, I think that don't have him. Don't have, he's got two against Whitaker. Yeah, right. So you have you have Izzy there. Who who is the signature win for Leon Edwards? RDA. I mean, RDA is a good win. RDA is a good fighter. Former champion at 55, right. you know, but he beat him at 70. I, I don't know. Um, I, I there's think, a reason RDA came back down to 55. Yeah. You know, he, he lost some fights at, at, at 170. Almost you know, who, getting who's taken this, out. Who's uh, Islam's biggest win? Dan Hooker? Armand. But again, Armand took the fight on short notice, and I think that – Armand was like 19 years yeah. old on short notice. Armand, since then, Sarukian has, has shown to be an amazing fighter. But when you take your first fight to get in the UFC, you're really young, and you take it on short notice, and you win 29-28, that's, that's not a signature win. Agreed. In my opinion. Just a, just a name, though. I mean, we're looking back. But on now, it. do I think Islam's going to beat Charles Oliveira, who's on my top five? Yeah. yeah. If yeah. I had to bet on that fight, I'd bet on him. Uh, but he's did, gonna, I was going to say he's going to jump into that pound-for-pound pound rank, ranking when he beats Charles Oliveira. If he beats Charles, he's immediately yeah. on, that, yes. on that ranking, and he will deserve to be. Agreed. And, and same thing with Leon, obviously. You take out Usman and the streak you're on, all of a sudden you're going to get some big headlines and, 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 and get into oh, that pound for pound. If Leon Edwards beats Usman, yeah. 
who's a strong number two on that list, and a lot of people will have number his one. number one on that list. You know, he's he's made his case for it. He probably jumps up to Usman's spot. Yeah, kind of crazy, right? And and deservedly so. I mean, you, yeah. like you said, you need the signature win to be considered. You know, in that in that great category of pound for pound. Um, the flip side of that is, you know, you get some prospects that come through. And we'll go through a, a prospect list later on. We haven't had time to do it. But one name that kind of jumps out, and he actually competed this weekend and just signed with the UFC, Dan, you could probably shed more light on his situation, is Bo Nickel, um, three-time NCAA champion, four-time All-American out of Penn State University. Danny Hodge Award winner. Yeah. For those who don't follow that, that's like the Heisman of college wrestling and <laughs> the best wrestler in college. He, I think, twice won the award for most pins. Yes, um, yes. While he was in college, he's just a – just an amazing, amazing athlete, and he has really, really taken Tra- training to out MMA. of American Top Team up there in Happy Valley, Happy Valley, Pennsylvania, coming from an incredible program with Kale Sanderson, um, and now he's just full time there with Marcel Ferrer up there in ATT. Comes down here, spends time down here training as well, and he uh, so this he got fast tracked. Yeah, so this weekend he um, he's had a couple amateur fights, and then his last fight was pro. So I think he's two and zero amateur, one and zero pro, I believe. Yes. And he just did a grappling thing there for the uh, International Fight Week for the UFC. And then the UFC signed him. Dan, could you talk about the deal he got or how, or how that came through? And He, he signed a deal, uh, and, I, and I think I saw that Malky, his manager, had spoken about it. So I, I guess it's out there in the open. He signed a deal with the UFC, but he's got to get through the contenders first. So he's going to have a contender series fight um, probably towards the end of the summer. And should he win that fight and win it in impressive fashion? Um, I don't know if they'll make him go to one more contender series fight and then to the UFC, or if it's one fight and into the UFC. I think that remains to be determined. But in theory, you're going to have a guy who could be two and zero in Emma in professional MMA and and signed on the main roster. Right. Maybe worst case scenario, three and zero if he if they make him do two fights, and if he wins those two fights, he'd be three and zero and in the UFC, which is kind of a crazy position to be in, and yeah. it's something you really had to sit back. And think about you don't want to rush people in in into the deep waters too quick. You see what happened with Aaron Pico. I, I was going to bring his name up to you, Pico. You know, I, I haven't seen a wrestler with this kind of buzz getting into MMA. Um, not at the end of your career, but kind of as you as you're as you're still in your prime. Aaron Pico is one of those guys. Bo Nichols the other. I think the problem with Pico was, and I think Bellator did a good job. But I think the problem with Pico was he wanted he kept you know, yearning to fight better competition and probably to his own detriment was a little too ahead of, ahead of himself. Uh, and probably should have listened to Bellator and his management a little bit or his team or whatever and said, Hey, let's continue to develop you. I think Bo needs to take that same route of listen to your team, listen to people around you, the people you trust and, and, and develop and work, uh, prior to getting some crazy. I don't know, Aaron Pico. I think it's kind of cool that a kid wants to fight Yep. Good guys, quick. He's, I don't want. I don't want to slowly build myself. That's kind of you know. You respect that. At the same time, wasn't the smartest approach in the world. You know, I remember seeing him early in his career, like literally standing in the pocket, throwing combinations of the body. You know, with, I mean, four ounce gloves this far from a guy who's gonna who's a head hunter, and right. you're throwing combinations of the body. It's like this might not Recipe end for well. Disaster. And boom! It, it 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 didn't. So he he probably should have waited. Not necessarily because his skills weren't up to the level. Just Fight IQ, comfort in the ring. There's things you need to hone in on, which is going to take some fights to do. Um, so he probably didn't have the greatest strategy as far as picking opponents to get where he is. He's certainly looks like he's he's the fixed real deal. that. Yeah, I think you so. know. I, I hope his his chin's still what it was before. He's a young kid. Hopefully it is. Um, but but I don't put Bo Bo Nickel isn't going to you know go against the advice of his team and his coaches and his management. He's a smart kid. He's a, a super smart kid, but he does want to test himself. Oh, 100%. And, and he's going to get tested. I mean, you got the guys on Dana White's Contender Series, they're, they're good fighters, and you see how well some of them have done in the UFC. Dan, you know, it's funny. If you're somebody on the outside and you're a fighter and you get matched up with Bo, you're thinking, oh, I want to fucking kill this guy. Bo's got the name. You know, I take out Bo, I'm getting a shot. So... He's going to have a target on his back, 100%. The only problem is you're going to be on your back. <laughs> and people don't really win fights on their back. Yeah. You know, so if, when, you, when, you look at, when you look at Bo Nickel and, and what the immediate future holds from him, you know, I, I remember I got a call from a couple guys at UFC, you know, immediately after he knocked the kid out in his pro debut, uh, which was his second knockout in, I think, three fights, which, you know, you wouldn't expect. 
you know, from, from the wrestler. And it was, hey, how good is this kid? Mm. And I'm like, how good is he at what? You know, if you want to talk straight grappling, there's you know, he's going to put everybody on their back. You know, he's not he's not going to lose the grappling matches. You know, <clears throat> anywhere. And, and it's funny you say grappler because he's more than just a wrestler. We, we've seen him grapple, and he's and he picks it up like that. Man, it's scary. But I didn't yeah, he he interject there. But. Yeah, a little bit of a phenom just as far as the feel goes. Yeah. For you know, he's going to dominate people and put them on their backs. But then his feel for things, it's like he's doing things that he doesn't even know exactly what he's doing. He's just doing it by feel. Um. So, you know, as far as a complete mixed martial artist, he's a kid, he's a baby, you know, but he's such a super athlete, so dedicated. You talked about, you know, gym rats, the guy's a gym rat yeah. and, and he's got, he's already got a really high fight IQ. So sky is the limit for Bo Nickel. It's just, it's just almost surreal that, you know, he is a fight or maybe two fights away from being in the UFC because one thing the UFC said is, you know, once they... Um, I don't manage Bo, but I'm, I'm certainly calling into the UFC as those negotiations are going on. Say, hey, let me just let me just get this straight. How how is this progression going to be with Bo when he gets into the UFC? And they're like, well, obviously we're gonna try to match make guys against people of similar levels when they're on their way up in the UFC. We're not gonna try to put them against a top ten guy. Top ten guy's not gonna fight someone who's two and zero professional or three and zero professional, obviously, but. If by how's this progression going to be, do you mean are we going to bring guys in and sign them to the UFC specifically to fight him because they're his level? Hell no. He's going to fight guys that are on the UFC roster. And we don't have scrubs on the UFC roster just for the sake of being on the UFC roster. Now, we certainly have different levels of guys. Right. You know, and we're going to bring him in and he's not going to start at the top of the of the roster. He'd start towards the bottom of the roster because that's where he fits in and, and he will go as he goes. Um, so it's... It's strange and a little bit daunting that a guy, a kid in the MMA, a, a, a puppy, is going to go in there and potentially after two pro fights, three pro fights at the max, be on the UFC roster, fighting guys on the UFC roster. But uh, I think he's going to do great. I mean, I, I really do. I, I agree with you, and it obviously behooves the UFC to develop him along the way and not just throw him to – top 20 guy off the bat or whatever it may be, or two fights in, uh, but actually develop him um, and see where he goes and then fast track him because, you know, they're always looking for stars. Bo Nickel will be their star. He will be their all-American hero uh, once he cracks that top 10 and people start paying attention to him. He's that good, and I think people, once they – I mean, don't forget, if it wasn't for a freak like David Taylor, Bo Nickel would be, would represent, you know, the United States in the Olympics. Um he had made it to the finals against David Taylor, who was another freak from Penn State wrestler, just a phenomenal guy and a phenomenal person also. He's been down here, and we met him up there uh, at our grand opening. But uh, if, it really, if it wasn't for him, Bo Nickel would, would probably still be wrestling. So thanks, David. <laughs> and if, if Bo wasn't such a competitor and, and so anxious to get on to the next phase of his life, he could have stuck around and hit the next cycle. Yes. You know, because I'm, I'm not sure. I think Taylor's probably towards the end of his. I don't I don't know that he's looking to compete again and try to make it. And Bo would be the favorite to make the Olympic team right. the next time if David Taylor wasn't there. Yep. Um, but he wanted to get in. He's like, I'm I'm ready to go. I want to start fighting. Um which is smart <clears> because <throat> if you're you don't want to get in, you know, past your prime and, and you know your years are you're still rustling and chasing that dream, which I get because you've done it all your life. But if you're already thinking about fighting you you can't do both. You know, you really need four to, years a long time. Yeah, and you really need need to make a decision. I mean, you want to waste not waste, but you want to use that four years away from MMA and then try to jump into it. And you know, you're you're just not the same. So I think Bo made the right. You decision. You have one ass. How many horses can you ride at the same time? Right. You know. So you look at Johnny Eblen. Five years ago, he had just gotten here. He had never fought, never thought about fighting. He had just been a college wrestler. Yep. And was getting ready to start a career working as an estimator for a construction company. And he met Steve Mako by chance and says, hey, why don't you come check out the gym? Five years later, he just beats a legend in Gegard Mousasi, and he's the Bellator middleweight champion of the world. And he beat a very, very legit fighter to get that. So, you know, where could Bo Nickel be four years from now if he, you know, if, if he sticks with MMA, which he is? <laughs> sky's the limit for him. So Izzy needs a wrestler to beat him. Bo Nickel's 185. I mean, who knows, obviously, if Izzy will still yeah, be there a, at that point. Who, but I'm just... Bo is the type of guy that could take over that division. And I'm not saying, don't get carried away, obviously. I'm not, I'm not saying this is happening tomorrow or next year. Uh, but 
two, three years down the road, um, don't be surprised if you see Bo Nickel right up in there. You're, they call them prospects for a reason yep. because it's perspective. Nobody yep. knows. Yep. There's a hell of a lot more high-level prospects that fizzle out than that make it. But you mentioned that maybe we end up doing like a top prospects in the, in the sport coming yep. up. He's number one on my list. Yeah. He's going to be. And I haven't even thought about it yet. You know, I got a couple names in my head, but we'll we'll, we'll break the list down on the next time. I'd be but. surprised if any of those names are above him on my list when it comes out. But we'll yeah, look at it. Yeah, we'll we'll keep it close to the vest until then. We'll we'll drop one of those on you. But. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see him. Dan, and cautiously he, optimistic, a little scared at the prospect of jumping right into Dana White's contender series and then into the UFC this early in his career. It's not the way I would map it out on paper. But if if you saw this guy train and you you talk to him and you got inside his head, yeah. you'd understand it a little Listen, bit. Listen, you. You don't go to Penn State to begin with from high school and say, I mean, Penn State was one of the best college wrestling programs around, obviously, with Oklahoma State, Iowa, et cetera. There's a few of them out there. It's the I Alabama mean, college wrestling. Right. So you, he went to Penn home. State. You know, David Taylor's ahead of him. Some of these other guys ahead of him. Um, the competition level there is insane. Um, he's a little bit of a competition freak. Uh, we got a chance to meet his family. He's grounded. He comes from I mean, his mom's super competitive, too. Um, he's, he just comes from good surroundings good people around him and um i'm i'm super like you i'm just very very high on Bo in his career and i don't see anything derailing this kid i don't either um okay so let's jump off that well let's talk about this weekend's card coming up it's ufc on uh it's a it's a fight night every and week it's every be, week how great is this rafael yeah right Raf, it's only rafael's going at it it's going to be rafael uh Fazeev? Fazeev against rafael dos Anjos. And it's a good fight. Yeah, it's it's interesting. You know, Dos Anjos is thirty seven years old. I think I think uh, Fiziev is what probably around thirty. He's coming off that win where he beat up on Brad Riddell. Um, he's twenty nine. Okay, eleven and one. Fiziev has a lot of hype. Yeah, knocks out a lot of guys. Really, really good striker. Um, RDA, former champ at 55, um, went up to 170, won some fights, lost some fights, fought for an interim title there, yeah. lost to Colby Covington, back down to 55. He's a tough, tough, tough out for anybody. Yeah. Um, good striking, good ground, good takedown defense, good in the clinch. Good cardio. Good, good cardio, comes from a good camp, good fight IQ, 37 years old. He's an underdog. Bottom line is, you're gonna, would you put some money on Dos Anjos over, over Fiziev? Yes. And, and, the, and the odds were what? Was he like plus 200? He's um, Fiziev's minus 200, minus 225, minus 210 on the different lines. And the comeback is plus 175, plus 180. Um, so at, at that money, I would say yes, I would. And I'm basing it on the fight I just happened to be at um, watching Fiziev against Bobby Green. <clears throat> and Fiziev came out and was just clearly the better striker in the fight and showed his talent, showed his skill, showed why he has all that hype. And you're watching the first couple of rounds, like, God damn, you know, because Bobby Green's fast. Yep. Bobby Green elusive. is smart. He's elusive. He's got crazy experience. Got his hands way yep. low just because he doesn't get hit a lot. Um, and Fazeev was was piecing him up early and, in that fight. And, and dynamic. I'm thinking, and I'm thinking, man, this guy is the real deal. But then he faded in the third round. Yes. And Bobby Green – beat the shit out of him in the third round. Thought he might pull it out at one point. At, at one point, you're thinking maybe he can get a finish because he needed a finish because he was down 2-0 two, two yes. big. Um, I think they ended up getting fight of the night just because Bobby came back so strong in the third round. <clears throat> but this is a five-round fight, and RDA is not going to fade Agreed. in a fight, even though he's 37 years old, and at some point that that switch is going to click and his gas is going to you know start to go away. But I haven't seen it yet. So... If I had to bet on the fight at those kind of odds, getting getting plus one eighty, I'm gonna bet on Fazee fading. Yeah. Um, now he's got to RDA is gonna have to survive the early parts of that fight, and and I'm assuming that you know Fazee, since he hasn't been five rounds, I'm assuming RDA is gonna have the advantage in the later rounds. Doesn't necessarily mean that he may not have had the greatest camp. He could have been sick. He could have been off in that fight. And you see, sometimes you see a guy fade, and then you see the next fight, and they're just strong good to go the whole fight oops i guess i was wrong maybe on that. It was a, right maybe it was the weight cut there's there's so many factors that play into these things i think uh Fiziev's best opportunity is to knock rafael out early uh, i agree yeah he's going to be loaded for bear he's a very dynamic striker and I, but you know again i think 
RDA's fight IQ will come into play here. And and he's so well rounded. I mean, he can wrestle. Yeah. I and mean, if you go back to his interim title fight at 170 against Colby, who's one of the best wrestlers in the UFC, whether you like him or not, in the second or third round, he took Colby down like two times. <clears throat> you know, and that's not an easy guy to take down. Agreed. You know, so um, he may be the best wrestler for has fought. And he's certainly a good grappler. He's a good striker, and he's got good cardio. Yep. So this is this is a fight where either RDA is going to expose some weaknesses in Fazeev, and you're going to say, okay, maybe the hype wasn't worth it, or Fazeev's going to come and finish him and win that fight, and you're going to say, holy shit, this guy's going to be a problem at 155. We've got a new contender. Yeah, and I was going to say, e either guy that wins, if you know, Dos Anjos wins this fight, he's right back into that mix uh, of probably maybe a fight or two away from, from a title fight again. I mean, it's a little bit of a logjam there right now, but I think if he beats uh, this beast in Fiziev, maybe one more fight, and then you're right there. Um, I think at 37 years old, I think his window's right, if short. not shut. It's it's pretty close to being shut. Um, hey, Dan, if you're not a in the skill ways, but it's it's just not the skill side of it. It's you know how many people really want to see RDA fight for a title? I mean, let's be honest. True, guy's a legend. Guy's a really good fighter. He's got a crazy. Uh, <laughs> List of accomplishments. Do you want to go see RDA headline a card fighting for the title at 155? I don't. No, because but I don't think you know. There's there's a little bit of logjam. There's so many good guys there. Whether you're even talking about DP and Gagey and Chandler and you know obviously Islam and, and is he going to get past the Islams? Is he going to get past even the Gamrots? No. Is he going to get past? Is he going to get past my Zerkian? Well, I guess my point is, I don't think RDA would fight to Zerkian. I think he'd be crazy if he did. But I, I think. If RDA wins in an impressive fashion, and then his next fight, whoever it may be, w again won in an impressive fashion, he'd be right there. You never know; these 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 resurrections happen. We've seen them before. So yeah, I just don't think the public is clamoring for that. And sometimes I don't either. But he'd have UFC to win books in... fights based more on who they think is going to sell and who people want to see, rather than who they think you know the rankings might say or who they think really deserves the fight. So I think RDA would have a really tough time getting another title shot. Agreed, unless you want in a dynamic fashion. And then you put your name right back in there, right? He certainly puts his name in there, but whether they choose his name out of that hat uh, that's, that's is, another a, is, story. A, is a different story. Right. I mean, Islam clearly deserves a title yes. shot. Benil Darius hasn't, hasn't lost a fight in, 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 in a long time. Agreed. Gamrock Gamrock right gets another win against a high-level guy. If he Say he fought like a Benil Darius and gets a win. Say he fights like a Justin Gaethje and gets a win. You know, you got guys that people just really want to see fight in the Gaethje's and the Chandler's, whether they deserve a title shot or not. But people really want to see those guys fight. Dustin Poirier, huge name, never has a boring fight, you know, always in that mix. I just think there's a lot of names above Agreed. RDA. In there's six list. names above. <clears throat> um, next fight on that card is a guy from that's – he did his training camp here. His name is Armen Petrosian, a great striker. He had a war with Greg Rodriguez. His last time out and came out on top. That was just a, a, a real war. And that Greg Rod Gregory Rodriguez is a tough dude. He's fighting Kai Borallo. First of all, um, Gregory Rodriguez is more than a tough dude. He's, he's legit. He's legit. He's <clears throat> enormous. Yes. For that weight class. Yes. And somehow or another cuts all that weight, but has still has good cardio. Dangerous as hell. Good striking. Good on the ground. That guy's a really good fighter. And for Petrosian to come off a win from him says a lot about Armin. Yeah. Um, he didn't fade, you know. That's uh, you know, we talk about fighters breaking, and, and and that certainly didn't happen with with either one of those guys. They were they were trading pretty good. But he's coming into a fight where he's like a two to one underdog. Yeah, which is crazy to us. We saw that, and we're a little little perplexed by that. Uh, Kyle Borallo, Borallo, I think he's got one loss. His last fight was against um, Godzi, and uh, pulled out the pulled out the win. And I know there was a point taken with the knee at the end of that round, um, at the end of the fight. Right, it was two rounds to one, minus the points, so 29-27 across the, across right. the board. Uh, but he's only had one, one fight in the UFC. Yeah, I, I so like Armand. Just haven't seen enough of him. He could be the, the next great thing. I just haven't seen enough of him um, to know and to get a real good feel for that. So based on that, I'm kind of surprised to see him be minus 205, minus 200, minus 215. Agreed. Across the board because I just I know how good Armand is. Um, but it's going to be a good fight. It will. It's it going to be a fun fight to watch. I don't know if I'd go throw any money on it or not, but fun fight to watch. Um, I know Michael Johnson's on that show. Always a fun guy to watch, which is crazy. I mean, the guy's 20 and 17. You look at that record and you're like, I mean, 
that just has journeyman written all over it from right. a record standpoint. The guy's got 17 losses and he's in the UFC. That's almost impossible. But then you watch his fights and it's like, does this guy ever lose the first round of a fight? Yeah, exciting you know, fighter. Does good he ever striking. have a boring fight? Yeah, good boxer, good striking, um, good knockout ability. Uh, he was off for a little bit, came back his last fight, and he won. And he looked really sharp his last fight. He's coming in here as an underdog. Um, as he should. I mean, he's he's lost a lot of fights. Right. Malarkey just lost um, his last fight. We were just talking about it before um, to the kid Jalen Turner, who looked pretty explosive. So... Uh, Should be. A, it's always going to be a fun fight. Michael Johnson is one of those guys that he can go 500 in the UFC, win one, lose one. He can win one, lose three, and he's the kind of guy that always has a job just because people want to see him fight. Yep, he's not you know? boring. Right, win or <laughs> lose, the last, he, farthest thing from boring. He's either dominating you, striking, getting in, or he's getting finished. Yep. So there's he doesn't have boring fights. And a couple of fights ago, he was up two rounds to zero on Josh Emmett. And got knocked out towards the end of the fight. I remember that fight. I know it was it was Emmett's first fight back from an injury, and he had a lot of ring rust. But, I mean, he was up 2-0 yeah. on Josh Emmett, who's either already deserves a title shot or, worst-case scenario, one fight away from a title shot, probably closer to getting one than having to earn it again. <coughs> um, so Johnson's a, a tough guy, a dangerous guy. You know, just never seems to pick up the grappling side and the, and the submission defense. Um, but does not have boring fights. So yeah. I... Every time I see his name on a card, I'm like, oh, cool. I'm going to watch that fight. Absolutely. Um, other than that, not, not much jumps out at me. I mean, you got, uh, I think, uh, you know, N Nina's fighting on that card against Cynthia Carvalho. Both tough chicks. Um, it'll be a tough fight for... Uh, they're they're both good. Yeah. They're um, both good. They're both tough. Um, it's going to be a question of can Calvillo take Nina down? Yep. Or can Nina keep it standing? Because if that fight's on the feet, Nina wins. If right. the fight's on the ground, Nina's probably on the bottom, which means she's probably losing. Agreed. What's that? Yeah, she went up to 125 finally. You know, I, I tried to talk her into doing that a few years ago and getting on that, that tough that show. Tough right? show yeah. Fight for a title. I think she actually would have won it. I do had too. Had she done it. I think her response at the time is, I'm too damn old to go stay in a house with a bunch of young girls, which Can't she probably had a point. Um, but I think 125 is a better weight class for her, and I think she's going to look better there. Yeah, I mean, these weight cuts, they, they grind on you as you get older. Your metabolism slows down, and your will to cut those last few pounds is 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 just becomes a, a, a real pain in the ass. But uh, other than that, that's, you know, not not much stands out as far as the card. But but you'll have a few fights that come through, and they're crazy good fights. And, always. And, and blow the house down. Always. Um, um, and you'll so, be like, wow. And you'll have a couple people on that show that are like, who the fuck is that? Yeah, that they guy's stand out really to good. Yeah, She's they're... really good. I never even heard of her before. So, you know, I'm starting to – it got to the point where, especially with some of the shows when they were doing overseas shows where they'd put a lot of local talent on the show, it's like, God, I don't know any of these people on the show. I'm not even going to watch these fights. Now it's like you almost have to watch every fight because, A, it could be, a, could be a fight of the year contender, and, B, it could be, wow, this person's really impressive, and you're going to end up fighting them down the road, one of your guys, and you, you want to have some knowledge of them. Agreed. Um Let's finish this off by doing a little our stock up, stock down segment. Uh, Danny, I'll throw th three names at you, and you can give me your thoughts on that. So we'll start from the top down. Um, Izzy, he won his fight, but was a real snoozer to a lot of people. Just, you know, stock up, stock down on this guy. Neutral? Strong. You would think it'd be neutral based on the fight. I'm going to go way stock up. And is that because of his ring entrance? Of the, the ring Undertaker? entrance was amazing as a wrestling fan. It was epic. But it's more than that. It's what's going to happen next. That they couldn't have lined up a, a better fight with for him Pereira. coming up with Pereira with the history. He's got two wins over him in kickboxing. Knocked him dead in one of those fights. Coming off a crazy good win against a really tough guy in Strickland. So you're going to have a very, very credible opponent. You know, it's going to be the first time in a while that Izzy wasn't a pretty big favorite going into a fight. I don't think he's going to be a monster favorite in this fight. That guy's a scary dude. Um, in, in a striking battle, which is what it's going to be. I mean, have you ever seen Izzy try for a takedown? I don't, I don't know if the guy has ever looked to take somebody down in the life. I'm sure all the wrestling he does is defensive wrestling and his training. <clears throat> so it's going to be a striking war. It's a cool story. You got the ring, the new, the new walkout, which is epic. <laughs> so, so I have to say something about the walkout. So I'm sitting there, and I noticed it right away, and I'm sitting next to two geeks 
You and Bobby Lashley, who's the WWE uh, heavyweight United champion. United States champion, former WWE champion. Yep. And he and I so, are so hopping I'm, I'm for like, this entrance. I look at him, Bobby, and I look at you, Bobby's like, he gets it. He gets it. I'm like, Jesus <laughs> Christ, I got to hear you two guys all night. But, uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a really cool thing. I, I thought the only thing he should have did was when he had that urn and he was walking out and, and, and it hit him, he should have probably put some ashes in the urn, you know, like it was already a foregone conclusion. I thought that would have been pretty funny, but uh, – yeah, that was a, that was a pretty cool ring entrance. So, so you're so you're a, you're a I'm buy- stock way up, even though the fight sucked. Um, again, it's he he's going to have fights like that because yeah, I mean, he has so. he has because he's such a scary dude and such a tough puzzle. If you're not going in there as a wrestler to take him down, and there's no wrestlers in the division really right now, so to speak. You know, the best wrestler in that division was Brunson, who didn't get a title shot. The next best maybe Vittori, who's just not good enough. Yeah at that particular part of the game to, to implement his will on Izzy. If you're, I mean, if you're not going to be able to take him down, what the fuck are you going to do with that guy? He's a scary dude. You're just going to fly at that guy? Yeah. I'm and not. He's a little so, bit bigger in person, too, when you when you see he's him. He's like 6'4", they yeah. listed him at. So yeah. so he's a scary dude, so I can see how it could lend us some boring fights, guys not wanting to engage with him. Um, but I'm going way stock up just based on what's next for him. That's going to be a highly promoted fight, and it could be a really fun fight. I think it's going to sell a lot of pay-per-views. Okay. Uh, next guy I'm going to throw at you is Max Holloway. Uh, he's a legend in the sport, one of your top guys to watch, one of my top guys to watch too. A uh, little bit of a snoozer on his end from, from an activity standpoint. Um, got dominated. Stock up, stock down, neutral. Stock you? down because he's probably never going to fight for a title again. Um, certainly not as long what as – What a bummer Vol- that is. I know. Right? What a certainly bummer not as is. long as Volkanovski's in that division. They're not getting that fight again. Right. Um, and again, Max may be. I think Volk. Put Charles Oliveira is my favorite fighter to watch. Max would be number two favorite fighter to watch. Max may be my favorite fighter of all time. There's a difference between fight favorite to watch and favorite fighter of all time. I just I cheer for him so much every time he fights. I just love everything about Max Holloway. Um, I still think he beats just about everybody in the division. You know, he didn't look good on Saturday. But he looked great the two fights before that against really high level guys, yeah. and, and and so he may still beat everybody in that division, not named Alexander Volkanovsky, who, again, we have at the top of our pound for pound list. Right. So it's certainly not a knock on you that you're not beating that guy, but just stock down because he's probably never going to fight for another title again, which okay. fucking sucks. Yeah, I agree with you on that. Um, and then the last guy I'm gonna throw at you is uh, O'Malley. Just fought Pedro, you know, came off the eye poke. Again, um, I thought I thought he was an asshole, the way he handled yeah. what happened. I thought the fight was boring. Um, I don't think O'Malley did a whole lot in that fight. Agreed. Um, neither one of them did. Um, he lost the first round on two judges' scorecards. So with all that said, stock up, just because we were sitting in that arena, and when they were showing people up on the big screen leading up to the show, whenever his face popped up there, the place went fucking nuts when he walked out the place went fucking nuts everything he did the few things he did the place went fucking nuts that kid has got charisma oozing out of every pore of his body people want to watch him people want to see him win um i don't know how well he's going to do going forward against good wrestlers or whatnot but man it's that kid is over yeah i think he's a neutral though dan i I mean Again, he had the pop, and I agree with you. We looked at each other like, holy shit, he's got a nice pop coming out to the crowd. Um, but that was kind of like a, a big nothing burger as far as the fight's concerned. And I put that on O'Malley. If you're going to be that rising star, you got to put it on people. And and he certainly couldn't do that to who Pedro, did, who, and that was his Who test. did the 20,000 people watching that fight put it on? Yeah. I, they, but, they, they put it on Pedro, not on O'Malley. Right. O'Malley came out of that fight. People cheered him the whole way back. People popped for everything he said afterwards. Right. So – even though, A, I thought Pedro won the first round clearly. B, I thought Pedro, I know Pedro had a scratch corner and could not 100%, continue. 100%. And it was a result of the third foul in the fight. Yep. I mean, there was an eye poke earlier that Pedro didn't stop for. There was a nut check. Yep. And then there was another eye poke. I put that all on O'Malley. I don't think O'Malley did anything in the first round. He then comes out with an attitude, said, oh, I was piecing him up. I was killing him. I never got touched. You know, and he was looking for a way out. You're full of shit and kind of an asshole for saying it. And with all that said... He still came out of that fight to the fans and to the average fan who buys the pay-per-views and who dictates who's popular and who's not. Yep. He came out as still a star and maybe even a bigger star. So if he can do that and have a lukewarm performance, 
not have a fight that doesn't get through the halfway through the second round, gets declared a no contest, acts like a douche, and still comes out as a star in the fans' eyes. What happens when he comes out and has his A game and looks good? So I'm going yeah. with stock up. Okay. And, and it'll be interesting to see his next fight, who they match him up with, because obviously it probably won't be with Pedro. It just wasn't much there. Um, but I'll be curious to see who they match O'Malley up on his next uh, go around. How fun would a fight, and I'm just, not just the fight itself, I'm talking about the build up to the fight, the promos, the, the pre fight weigh ins and stare offs. When they come to the center yep. of the octagon, if it's a main event, the fight itself, the post fight, how fun would him and Dominic Cruz be? Oh, it'd be great. But I think Dominic would own him as far as all that. Dominic is, is really good on the mic, he's a sharp dude. Um, that'd be a fun fight to watch. And he's got a really, really high fight IQ. I'm, I like watching Dominic Cruz, man. I'm a little bit of a fan Don, of his. Dominic Cruz is a stud. Yeah. He, 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 he really is. Yeah. Um, Student of the game, you can tell by his analysis, he's, he's sharp, man. He's on it. Sometimes comes across a total fucking asshole. I love that. I do too. <laughs> it's like it's almost like he says stuff just to take the opposite side of the other commentators or whoever he's talking to, just to prove the that he's smarter. The, con the contrarian yeah, approach. Yeah, just I'm smarter than you. I can take even if I don't agree with what I'm going to say. I'm smarter than you enough to say it and make you look dumb because he's got the facts to back it up. And he kind of he's he's really he good. bullies his way in, he's into his. He's great at breaking down fights. Yeah, um, probably my favorite analyst. We're, during, we'll, during the fights it's to funny. listen to. Yeah, we'll go over a, an analyst, a top analyst yeah. uh, list at 1.2, but, but I agree with you. He's really good at it, and he's a really good fighter, and he's good at shit talk. Um, I'd love to see those two fight. Yeah. Um, I mean, Frankie Edgar's right there, too, and I think Frankie Edgar might expose an O'Malley. I don't think so, dude. I think yeah, Frankie Edgar is way on the wrong side of I, I was going to say he's a little long in the tooth, but Frankie could take him down and grind him if he wanted to be smart about it. I don't think they do that fight. I don't either, because I think it would expose him. But um, okay, I got you. On, so, so just from the top down. So, Izzy, you're a stock up. Um, Max, you're a stock down, and O'Malley, begrudgingly, I, you're, I'm a stock up. You're a stock as up. crazy as it sounds, just based everything that happens should be stock down. Agreed. Every little part of it, stock down, stock down, stock down, stock down. Crowd reaction, stock up equals stock up. Agreed. So, if if you made it through this entire. Um, podcast here. Let us know. You know, we went over our pound for pound list. Let us know where we're wrong, where we're right, and uh, let us know if you think Dan is right or wrong on the O'Malley thing. One last thing. I know you your betting app. You got locked out of it again. I don't know if you got time to tell that story. I, um, I so went. I liked some fights this weekend. <laughs> Thank God we're in Vegas, so we could just walk to the sports book. How convenient is that? And do whatever. Yeah, it we actually wanted. happened at the Bellator show. I was at the Bellator show, and I and I liked Johnny Evelyn. I really like Johnny Evelyn. I liked a couple other fights on the card too, which, of course, because I didn't get to bet them, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I I I I won well, all of them. Well, I know you got a really good relationship with them. You flew up there last oh, time. God. You got you got fucking. But shot I was up. I was in the casino, and I, I looked at my betting app, and it said I'm locked out. I'm like, what the fuck? You know, I it's not like I'm up big on Bovada, and it said you know basically you got nowhere to call so i had to send an email to a customer contact i did that i got an email back that says you got to do the live chat come here do this do that you know, whatever you know i'm just going to go to the sports book they do have a live sports book so but i got hot at the craps table before the show started and i didn't want to miss our guy's first fight the first guy we had fight on the show was Killy's mata i didn't want to miss no, that fight first guy was uh, i think cody law was i'm it? sorry cody law um, I didn't want to miss cody's fight so i got caught at the craps table i'm like i either got to leave in the middle of this roll to go to the sports book, or I got to play this role out and then run to the fight. And, and knowing not, your mentality, you're going to play the role out. Fucking A, right? The sports book is, is unpredictable. Yes. I know I'm winning on this right. role. <laughs> so I played craps up until the time of the fight, ran to, to catch Cody's fight, and did not get to bet because I didn't get to bet online. I actually, <clears throat> while I was doing it, I had one workaround, and it was open up a FanDuel account. I think it's FanDuel because they run the – they're actually tied in and linked with the casino. It's either DraftKings or FanDuel. I don't know which one. I think maybe DraftKings. They were tied in. They basically operate the book, the sports book at, at the Mohegan Sun, some other sports books as well. So I open an account. I put five grand into the account, two $2,500 transfers out of my bank account to my DraftKings or FanDuel account, whatever the hell I opened up, and tried to place a bet, and it wouldn't let me. It said you need additional account verification. I did what I did and it still didn't fucking work. So now I got five grand sitting in a FanDuel or DraftKings account that I didn't get to use and I can't access. I got locked out of my Bovada account. I'm still trying to get my money out 
of my my bookie account, and every time I every time I get the goddamn Bitcoin out of there, five grand at a pop because I had like 150 grand in there, it's worth less and less every time I get it. So, kind of a clusterfuck, but yeah, whatever. Three accounts, total shit. Thank God uh, we walk down to the area. We just go right to the sports book and do what we do, and that's yes. just awesome. That's I just love it, and uh, and hopefully here in Florida. Um, they're able to push it through over at the Hard Rock or some of the other power mutuals. It'll be just a godsend where we don't have to worry about any of this uh, shit. Actually, the guy that runs that called me when I set my account up so I'm not allowed to bet MMA. I know the guy. What's that got to do with me? He's a Miami Hurricanes fan. Yeah, but what's that got to do with me? Fuck you. Who cares about you? (laughs) He's a Hurricanes fan. Is he? So he's my buddy. And uh, and we we talked about when they were setting it up and then when they actually had the sports book up for like a week or whatever it was up before there was an injunction. I remember. You know, he calls like, yeah, you can't, you can't bet on MMA because you're an insider. I was like, okay, I get it. Yeah. How about yeah. other people's fights that don't involve my guys? He's like, nope, you still can't bet. I was like, that's kind of weird. but That's oh, stupid. Whatever. Yeah, it's what it is. But uh, anyway, it's always fun to hear your uh, trials and tribulations. Yeah, glad, glad, I'm glad you get some joy out of that. I do. It brings me great joy. That's it. I think we're going to wrap this one up. Uh, hopefully you're uh, still supporting us. Like it, share it, do all that good stuff. Comment, let us know what you think about this. And hopefully you guys have a good betting weekend. Daniel, we are out. Anything else for you? Nope. All right, out.